Welcome, dear students. Today, I'm going to discuss some basic and fundamental aspects of vernalization. Actually, this is a very important and crucial aspect of flowering. Already I discussed in my previous lectures. So what actually vernalization is? This is the promotive effect of low temperature on flowering. So, the photoperiodic regulation or impulses and the temperature are two of the main environmental regulating factors that plant monitor to determine the correct time to develop a flower. Actually, the word vernalization is derived from the Latin word vernus, which explaining about the spring results in the development or development of the quality to form a flower. But uh, this not actually imply that after the vernalization plants uh, develop flowers simultaneously. But it gained the power to form the flower subsequently. And we can revert this condition by the exposure to devernalizing conditions like high temperature, etc. The vernalized state can also be maintained through tissue culture experiments or tissue culture conditions also. And it has been found that the grafting and localized cooling have shown that the apical meristem is the site of cold perception during vernalization and that vernalization causes the meristems to become competent to form a flower. So, the dividing cells are a fundamental site for vernalization. And in this portion, I must mention that gibberellins can substitute the activities of vernalization also. Now, we have to study, we have to know the mechanisms by which vernalization acts. Before that, we have to go through the floral development. Actually, the floral development regulated by two types or two groups of genes. One is known as floral meristem identity gene, like leafy or LFY, apetella 1 or AP1, cauliflower or cal. And the other group represented by the floral organ identity genes, like apetella 1, AP1, apetella 2, AP2, apetella 3, AP3, pistillata, or P, I, and Agamas, or AG. 
So these group of genes act together in a balanced and synchronized way to develop a flower. Now, after the after various studies in Arabidopsis, we all know that is the Drosophila of plant kingdom, commonly known as Arabidopsis thaliana. And it's a model organism. And there are so many experiments in Arabidopsis which identified some of the genes that are involved in the flowering process. Vernalization involves various epigenetic modifications in the expression of the gene FLC, that is the flower flowering locus C. And this encodes a transcription vector that represses flowering. This is very, very important point. That FLC or flowering locus C represses flowering. So, to develop flower, we have to suppress its activity. But how it works? Now we will discuss. It is expressed predominantly in mitotically active portions. In response to vernalization, the amount of FLC, mRNA and protein is reduced. So, vernalization, the process vernalization actually acts by reducing the activity of the FLC. The reduction in FLC expression by vernalization involves chromatin modeling, which requires VIN3 or vernalization insensitive 3 protein. Now, as I already mentioned, the two group of genes act together in floral development, how they regulate the flowering mechanism. The transition from vegetative to the floral meristem is crucially and intricately controlled by endogenous programs and various other environmental signals. In some plants, the transition to flowering occurs independently of the environmental signals. This pathway is known as autonomously regulating mode. Other plants require transition to uh, other plants they develop uh, flowering by exposure to appropriate environmental conditions. The transition to flowering is regulated by multiple signals and various other pathways also. Again in Arabidopsis, flowering controlled by four pathways. One is photoperiodic, second one is vernalization pathway, third one is autonomous, and the fourth one is gibberellin pathway. All these pathways regulate the meristem identity gene. That is, they develop the floral meristem by the regulation of these genes. The photoperiod and vernalization pathways mediating the response to environmental cues and the autonomous and the gibberellic acid pathway they act largely uh, mostly independently from the environmental from the other external signals so the autonomous and the gibberellic pathway they are unique as they act solely. Now, one of the other genes known as CO or constans play an important role in photoperiodic pathway. Both the light and the internal clock or the biological clock precisely modify the accumulation of the product of the constans gene. Constance increases the expression of the LFY gene. A floral 
Meristem identity gene, LFY or LIFI. LFY gene encodes a transcription factor that stimulates a gene to make its protein. And flowering occur. A central gene in the autonomous and vernalization pathway is flowering locus C or FLC already I mentioned which repress several loci that promoting promote flowering. So whenever FLC or flowering locus C activate there is no flower. FLC repression is activated by uh, epigenetic switch which represents the expression of the FLC itself by chromatin remodeling. And vernalization can promote the suppression of the FLC. Again, alternatively, the autonomous pathway, we encountered this, that this autonomous pathway can sense plants age and temperature quality. It has been established that FLC expression is promoted by the gene Frigida or FRI. This gene encode the FLC and this FLC is the most crucial element which suppress the floral development and all this pathway try to express itself by suppressing this FLC. Now this gibberellic acid pathway is very important for flowering under non-inductive short days and this gibberellic acid acts by upregulating the leafy gene. So these are the basic mechanism of vernalization and how it acts together with photoperiodic impulses to establish the flowering sequences. So dear students, please follow this lecture and go through your textbook to understand this basic concept. Thank you.